SpaceX employees have just revealed more details about the issues that led to the failure of Ship 36, and there are several key points that are worth discussing. In other news, ULA's Atlas V has successfully completed its second mission for Amazon's Project Kuiper. Meanwhile, China has carried out a new test of its well-known Zhuchui 3 rocket engine, which has often been compared to other leading designs in the industry. Let's explore all of this and more on today's episode of Great SpaceX. The Ship 36 incident continues to capture widespread attention. The more we uncover about what happened, the more it reveals about deeper issues, not only with this particular vehicle, but also with the Starship program as a whole. Recently, several new revelations have come to light, this time from a former SpaceX employee named Morgan Wyatt Kahn. According to Morgan, many of the issues leading up to the Ship 36 explosion may be tied not only to technical challenges, but also to poor workmanship and substandard procedures at the Starbase facility. One of the most discussed components recently is the Composite Overwrapped Pressure Vessel, or COPV. SpaceX and Elon Musk have both identified a failure in this system as the likely cause of the explosion. Independent analysts have also pointed to a COPV rupture, which likely compromised the structural integrity of the ship, severed fuel lines, and ultimately triggered the devastating explosion. However, the question still stands, why is the COPV failing in the first place? While previous discussions have explored complex technical issues and broader design challenges, Morgan's account offers a new and concerning angle. He claimed that during what he called the tent era at Starbase, some workers would routinely slam COPV bottles into the retrofitted brackets in the payload section. According to Morgan, he was responsible for handling issue tickets related to these actions and was forced to assess the resulting damage. This practice is especially dangerous. Even when COPVs are not pressurized, rough handling can easily cause microcracks or internal damage. Any hidden defect could result in catastrophic failure once the vessel is pressurized or exposed to cryogenic temperatures. According to Morgan, the damage was so severe that at one point, the entire program had to halt operations while they waited for new COPVs to arrive. And unfortunately, the careless treatment of these components did not end with delivery. Morgan went on to describe poor installation practices as well. He stated that COPV distribution pipes were often loosely tightened, lacked proper sealing, and in some cases were held in place with cross-threaded bolts of the wrong size. These oversights suggest not just a lapse in quality control, but also a lack of proper training or experience among workers involved in these crucial tasks. He also speculated about the exact failure that might have occurred with Ship 36. In his view, it is possible that the COPV plumbing was never properly sealed. This could mean that the hardware was not fully integrated or that seals were broken, missing, or incorrectly installed. Loose or missing components could also have played a role. Another question that has come up is why the problem did not appear earlier during cryogenic testing or the single-engine static fire test. Morgan said that stress and strain limiting factors could be chokeholding the stack up on hardware. He also pointed out that the stainless steel used in Starship construction is particularly vulnerable to thermal shock, which could further contribute to sudden failures. When subjected to extreme temperature changes, stainless steel can contract rapidly, which may even lead to damage to the heat shield tiles. But Technical challenges aside, perhaps the most concerning point Morgan raised is how management at Starbase has been handling these issues. In his view, problems are not being addressed with the seriousness they deserve. The combination of sensitive systems and a rushed or careless approach has created a situation where major failures become increasingly likely. The S-36 explosion is a prime example of this. A single flaw in one component cascaded into a full system failure, costing SpaceX a critical prototype and delaying the program's timeline. And while COPV is the current focus, it is only one of the many systems within Starship that require close attention. Issues with engines, flaps, tanks, and plumbing have all emerged at different stages in recent tests. These revelations raise broader questions about the overall workforce culture and management structure at Starbase. While Musk and Shotwell continue to lead SpaceX at the highest level, their direct involvement in Starbase operations appears to have decreased over time. Some suggest that their more frequent presence could help reestablish higher standards and restore stronger oversight to the team working on Starship. Before anything else, SpaceX must now turn its attention to the aftermath at the Massey test site. Damage must be assessed 
and repaired, and new testing systems may need to be constructed to move forward. But more importantly, the internal practices that contributed to this failure must be thoroughly reviewed and improved. Sensitive systems like COPV need clear protocols, better installation practices, and rigorous checks. Broader systems should also be audited to prevent recurring issues. Lessons must be learned not only from the explosion of Ship 36, but also from the earlier problems seen in Flights 8, 9, and other recent test flights. If handled well, this could be a turning point. While the explosion was undoubtedly a major setback, it could also serve as a much-needed wake-up call. SpaceX now has the opportunity to reassess, regroup, and come back stronger. With better systems, improved oversight, and renewed attention to detail, the company can still achieve the goals of reusability, orbital refueling, lunar missions, and eventually, Mars colonization. What do you think of these newly revealed causes behind the Ship 36 failure and the broader issues facing Starship? Is this the time for Musk and SpaceX to refocus? and raise the bar across the board? If you agree, comment let's do it down below. And as always, like the video and subscribe to our channel to continue following the incredible journey of SpaceX. Now let us move on to the latest update on ULA's Atlas V mission. After facing a series of delays due to an earlier engine related issue, Atlas V mission tasked with deploying Amazon's Kuiper satellites has finally taken flight. This significant launch occurred at 6.54 a.m. Eastern on June 23rd, successfully sending Amazon's second batch of Kuiper satellites into low Earth orbit. The mission proceeded smoothly through all critical flight phases. Notably, the main engine cutoff went off without a hitch, and ULA later confirmed that all 27 Kuiper satellites were successfully deployed into their designated orbit. With this addition, Amazon's Project Kuiper constellation now totals 54 satellites. The first deployment took place on the 28th of April, marking the official start of what is expected to be an ambitious rollout. Project Kuiper is Amazon's answer to SpaceX's Starlink, and the Atlas V plays a key role in its early phase. According to ULA, the Kuiper payloads are the heaviest ever carried by Atlas V at 34,000 pounds or 15,400 kilos. The satellites ride into space attached to a special dispensing tower and release at predetermined intervals, representing the most separation events ever performed in a single Atlas launch. However, these two initial launches are just the tip of the iceberg. Project Kuiper aims to build a broadband internet constellation that will eventually include more than 3,200 satellites. To achieve this, Amazon has secured launch agreements for approximately 80 additional missions over the next several years. The company is aiming to begin delivering internet service to select customers before the end of this year. In terms of launch providers, ULA will remain a central player. Amazon has already booked 8 Atlas V launches and 38 rides on ULA's next-generation Vulcan Centaur rocket. Additionally, Project Kuiper satellites will be sent to orbit aboard Blue Origin's New Glenn and Arian Space's Arian 6 rockets. As Amazon explained, those agreements comprise the largest commercial procurement of launch capacity in history and support thousands of suppliers and highly skilled jobs across the U.S. and Europe. Yet this ambitious multi-rocket strategy is beginning to show signs of strain. All three of Amazon's contracted launch providers are facing difficulties. The Vulcan Centaur, despite being positioned as the successor to the Atlas V, has only flown twice since the beginning of 2025. Its most recent flight encountered problems with one of its solid rocket boosters raising concerns about its readiness for regular service. Meanwhile, the Atlas V, although still highly reliable, is now approaching retirement. Only two more Atlas V missions are scheduled for Kuiper launches. This leaves a shrinking window of availability for one of Amazon's most trusted launch platforms. Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket has also seen limited activity. Its first mission flew in January, but failed to recover the booster, a setback for a rocket designed with reusability in mind. Since then, there has been little visible progress toward its second flight. Similarly, Ariane Space's Ariane 6 has only flown twice and has also faced issues during its second mission. This situation puts Amazon in a challenging position. While it has made historic commitments to secure launch capacity, the reliability and flight cadence of its launch partners have not kept pace with the ambitious timeline for Project Kuiper. As a result, the program risks falling behind Starlink, which already boasts over 7,600 operational satellites, and active service around the world. Moving forward, it will be critical for all parties involved in Project Kuiper to make improvements. 
Launch providers must increase their flight cadence and reliability if Amazon hopes to stay in the race. The remaining Atlas V launches will play a crucial role in keeping that project on track, but long-term success will depend on the rapid maturation of Vulcan, New Glenn, and Ariane 6. So let us keep a close eye on how Amazon and its launch partners respond in the aftermath of this mission. Will they overcome these growing pains and accelerate Project Kuiper's deployment? Only time will tell. And now we shift to China, where the Zhuchui 3 rocket is quickly emerging as the centerpiece of the country's push for reusable launch technology. Built by private firm Landspace, the Zhuchui 3 builds on the Methalox foundation of its predecessor, the Zhuchui 2, but introduces major upgrades aimed at reusability, following the path forged by SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Starship. At midnight Eastern, June 20th, a major milestone was achieved. Landspace successfully conducted a static fire of the Zhuchui 3 booster at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. All nine Tianchui 12A engines ignited in sequence, burned for 45 seconds, and shut down as planned. With 7,542 kilonewtons of thrust, the test confirmed the vehicle's heavy lift potential and readiness for its first orbital flight. The test mirrored a full launch cycle which involves pressurization, multi-engine ignition, gimbal control, steady burn, and shutdown, using the same stage intended for flight. Landspace hailed it as a key step toward making China's reusable rocket ambitions a reality. The inaugural flight, set for the third quarter of this year, is expected to carry a prototype of the How Long cargo craft, developed to support the Tiangong space station. Interestingly, new specs put the Zhuchui 3 at 66 meters tall, which is 10 meters shorter than earlier figures. This could indicate reduced payload capacity for earlier flights, for early flights, but it doesn't diminish its role as a serious challenger in the global launch market. China's efforts with Zhuchui 3 reflect a broader strategy to compete with the West, not just through state programs, but now with commercial ventures as well. The race is no longer defined by governments alone. Companies like Landspace are rising fast. With SpaceX facing delays after Ship 36's explosion and ongoing COPV concerns, the pressure to rebound quickly is real. China's progress adds urgency. The next few months will be pivotal. As we watch Zhuchui 3 edge closer to orbit, the modern space race continues to intensify, and the next leap could come from either side of the Pacific. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay updated with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.